Meet Arnold. Today, he's working as a delivery man. Come on faster, Arnold, before the kebab gets cold. Just remember to always smile and you might get tipped. What interesting people live here. I'm guessing they are watchmakers. Oh. It looks like you're gonna get a big tip. Wait, what's that? Arnold, something tells me you're in some seriously deep doo-doo. I was right, Arnold. This is bad. Those guys aren't watchmakers. They're terrorists. And since you gave food to the terrorists, mm. now you're one of them. And you've been sent to a place from which nobody has ever what? escaped. Guantanamo Bay Prison. Arnold, didn't you hear me? Nobody has ever managed to escape from here. They don't even try because it's impossible. And if anyone even dares to try to escape, he'll have to find a way to get through 20 centimeter thick metal doors down an endless maze of corridors with surveillance cameras. Fight off vicious guard dogs. Get over super high voltage, five meter tall electric fences through razor-sharp concertina wire and past dozens of guards in every sector. At the moment, 40 of the most dangerous criminals in the world are held at this prison. And you, my friend Arnold, are on the list. Congratulations! Nevertheless, you're not allowed to talk to any of them. After all, every prisoner is in strict solitary confinement 24 hours a day. Speaking of time, it's time to have lunch! Let's see what's on the menu for today. All right, what do we have here? They only have one special prison dish, something called Nutriloaf. Nutriloaf is a prison punishment food made from leftovers without the slightest hint of salt or spices. <laughs> Good Lord, that makes me want to barf. I have no idea how you're going to eat it, Arnold. So you're not going to eat it. You decided to go on a hunger strike as a sign of protest. Oh, and look how cute. You made a little dolly friend out of bread to keep you company. Well done, Arnold. But I think you overreacted about the food. I completely forgot to tell you, but Guantanamo Bay is not a place where human rights are given a whole lot of thought. So, if someone goes on a hunger strike, for example, he's force-fed with a tube that's pushed up yeah. one of his nostrils. Okay, so this plan doesn't always work. But don't think for a minute that this is over. A whole smorgasbord of tortures are waiting for you. Water, cold, music, and electric torture are all being practiced in Guantanamo. And the cherry on top is sleep deprivation. After just a few days of such torture, your brain and muscle functions weaken, your thinking processes and your will can now easily be broken. After a week, due to lack of sleep, you'll start hallucinating. As a result of which, Arnold, Wow, what the bejeebers is that? Wow, your bread friend came to rescue you. Arnold, you're free. The only question is, where did a walking bread man get a high-powered laser weapon? Eh, as I already told you, Arnold, you're bescrewed, buddy. Are you waiting for your friends? Hmm, my friends don't act like that. Arnold, what have you done this time? Oh, not you, but rather your dangerous aunt. After she walked free last time, she got up to her old nefarious yeah. habits again. And now the FBI are taking you for 24 hours because, well, you know her best. There are about 15,000 agents working for the FBI with 56 regional offices. Their main training facility is located in Quantico, Virginia. More than 100 special agents are at the facility at any given time, ready to train new agents. They'll also teach our Arnold.
An FBI agent has to be prepared for anything, but not for this. How can that even possibly come in handy, Arnold? FBI agents received the right to carry weapons in 1934, a whole 26 years after their founding. Nowadays, marksmanship training is absolutely necessary and one of the most important courses. And Arnold seems to be doing just fine. Having proved his abilities at all stages of training, our Arnold will become an FBI agent for 24 hours. Not bad company, Arnie. Perhaps our Arnold will try his hand at the cyber department created in 2002. That's where they have the kind of cutting edge technology that will help Arnold in his search. Have you actually found what you're looking for already, Arnold? Come on, buck up, Arnold. I knew I shouldn't have expected much. After all, your belly always comes first. Thanks to a tip-off that was received by, of course, not Arnold, the FBI managed to find out where his aunt's accomplice lives, the infamous biker known as Buffalo Joe. And now a special operation is being carried out. Here's our suspect. Everybody get ready. Oh, Come on, Arnold. It's always something with you. Arnold, come on. Your colleagues need help. How are you going to stop him like that? What? It can't be. Somehow, your idiocy serves you well. Here's your chance to interrogate a prisoner. Well, Arnold, to get answers, you have to ask questions. And they say silence is golden. Oh, you have an idea, do you? You gonna give him a lesson on good behavior? Oh, God, what a treacherous move. Arnold, I don't recognize you. I didn't expect you to be able to break this mountain of muscles like he was a little baby boy. I see you think you're already a real FBI agent, Arnold, but you're still acting like a typical cop. Hey, how's about we continue with the search for your auntie? Let's go take a peek into the FBI archives. Over 5,000 individual strands of hair are stored here as evidence. There are even case files for Charlie Chaplin and John Lennon. We need to find your aunt's case so we can get a warrant to wiretap her butt. Now we can listen in on your aunt, just like with Pablo Escobar. And according to the latest information, she's just ordered herself a pizza. Arnold, this is your chance. You can go undercover. For your safety, you'll have a hidden microphone on you. And your task is to surreptitiously hide a bug in her office. The time is now. Hop to it, Arnold. Now, everything depends on you. It's really important that you try to act as naturally as possible. Ay, ay, ay! What a doorbell! Arnie, go into her house already. This is your chance. Go, go. Come on, Arnold. This is your mission. Go and put the bug in her office. Great. Now slowly and carefully sneak closer. Yikes! We seem to have a bit of a problem, Arnold. Uh, quick, come up with something. Oh, no. Arnold, get out! Run! Before it's too late! Yee! She's a little more dangerous than I thought. Arnie, hold on. Somebody's gonna rescue you for sure. Uh-oh. The jig is up, buddy. Now she's gonna myrtleize you without batting an eyelash. Did you come to apologize, Arnold? That's so sweet of you. Mr. Nice Guy. But your auntie's got other ideas. <laughs> you know, it's kinda ironic. You were chasing her before. Now she's chasing you, buddy. Are you ready to party? Out of sheer envy, Clint Eastwood himself would burst into tears like a little girl if he saw you. This'll be a super experience, I promise you. 
Dang, everyone's in cowboy suits here. Well, you're not the first person to copy this image. The American cowboys styled themselves after Spanish cowboys called vaqueros, and they appeared long before the American ones, when the Spaniards began to colonize south of the border. And did you know one in three cowboys was black, and one in four was Indian? And the language they most often spoke was Spanish, not English. Quite the introduction, Arnold. You really now are in the actual Wild West. And they call it wild for a reason, buddy. And nowhere is this moniker embodied more than in Fort Griffin, Texas. The fort was originally designed to protect ranchers and farmers who live nearby. The city quickly became a popular stopover for cowboys and criminals, and law enforcement was virtually nil. As a result, the city became even more dangerous, and it looks like you're now the sheriff of this city. Sorry, is it just me or are sheriffs not very popular in this little old town? Arnold, really? The first thing you decided to do as head honcho around here was update your wardrobe? Why so surprised? The average life expectancy in the Wild West was about 35 years. And for sheriffs, it was decreasing exponentially. Here comes your first good deed, Sheriff. What? You thought only cowboys carried guns. In reality, most cowboys were like shepherds driving cattle. They were pretty much harmless folk. But people with weapons were called gunfighters, and they earned their living with guns. The most legendary shooter in the whole Wild West was Frenzy Bill Longley. According to various sources, he killed up to 85 people and had a $1,000 bounty on his head. Luckily, people didn't have such good aim back then. The whole planet is infected with diarrhea virus from China. But I made your blood the only existing vaccine. There are 7 billion people in the world, and everyone is hunting for you. 195 countries have posted your photo on all possible media. You're in all of the police databases, and not only the world's police, but all the best special forces in the world are after you. MI6, British Intelligence, which has been working around the clock for 100 years straight. ISI, Pakistan's Interdepartmental Intelligence Agency, with the largest residency in the world, 10,000 agents. The CIA, watch out Arnie, they torture people. The Canadian Intelligence Service, with a search budget of over $507 million. Do you really think you can hide from all of them? You're on every single smartphone in social media. You become more popular than Greta Thunberg. I'm sure she envies you now. After all, you can actually help save humanity. Just give them your blood, all the way down to the last drop. Elite special forces from all countries are already coming for you. U.S. Navy SEALs, the French National Gendarmerie, Chinese Snow Leopards. But of course, even a random student could catch you. Big Brother is watching you. In New York City alone, there are about 20,000 surveillance cameras. They take photos, compare the distance between the main features on your face, nose, eyes, mouth. Data is converted into a person's numeric code, a face print, and verified with the database. In addition, on the dark net, anyone can buy image databases from video cameras of cafes, hospitals, shopping centers, even near the main FBI headquarters. Meaning they can find out where you were just five minutes ago. Catch this, these glasses with built-in infrared LEDs will help oh. you to hide your face from the cameras. For them, your face will look like a glowing blind spot. Wait a bit, you forgot the battery. This isn't enough. You need a disguise. It was a bad idea to eat this many donuts. They provoked an excessive accumulation of gases. Unleash the winds! You look good, but search dogs will find you by the smell of butyric acid, the odorous component of your sweat. It won't help that just one gram of sweat is enough for the dog to smell you on the roof of that 10-story building or at a depth of 15 feet under concrete. 
In the United States alone, there are nearly 7 million drones. Stop waving and take this special weapon against drones. This gun fires a wide stream of electromagnetic emissions so you don't have to aim. It's enough for the interference stream to cover the drone and then it'll lose contact with its base and lose control. What have you done? Get lost in the crowd, bone brain! Well, you have to kiss. So, Arnie, any last wishes? <laughs> Get up already! People sleep for one-third of their lives. During sleep, the body is restoring. Some species of birds, marine mammals, and reptiles can stay awake for up to 10 days. One half of their brain is asleep while the other one is working. In order not to waste time, streamer Asian Andy slept online and earned $16,000 in one night from donations. I think someone's breaking into your house, Arnold. Wake up! Arnold, who are these guys? They don't seem anything like your friends. Congratulations, Arnie. Somehow you've gotten yourself into what looks like pretty big trouble. Again. What the jumping Jiminy is this place? Looks like a college dormitory at not the best university. Wow, Arnold. Looks like you could be a superstar in a new reality series. How on earth did they get a file on all of you guys? Whoopsie daisy, I guess they got you here by mistake. What do they want from all of you? Uh-oh, I don't like this at all. Arnold, haven't you been able to sleep? A day without sleep leads to headaches. Your hearing becomes noisy and difficult. And your memory becomes impaired. Believe that on average, a person can endure no more than five days without sleep. That's when the real oh. test begins. Oh. Optical and oh. hallucinations begin to appear. The first to set a no sleep world record was 17 year old Randy Gardner, who stayed up for 11 days. But this was later beaten by Robert McDonald, who stayed awake for 19 days. But the representatives of the Guinness Book didn't <laughs> confirm it. And conducting such kind of experiments on yourself is quite dangerous for your health. You're the only one left, Arnie old pal. I'm reminded of one legend about Soviet scientists. They put five people in a room for 15 days with a stimulant gas that kept them all awake. Arnold, you're free! I can imagine you probably want to go home and have a good night's sleep. Hey, Arnie, are you sure it's okay to take pictures here? Arnold, I have bad news. All governments all around the world have been overthrown, and they're now each ruled by dictators. Yes, on the one hand, it's good. No one will leave their countries anymore, and everyone will work for their country's well-being and standing in the world. But on the other hand, under such regimes, most people won't live in houses or residential complexes, but in prisons, because the laws of the countries will be very strict and sometimes even really strange. You can forget about the benefits of civilization. After all, foreign economic relations aren't needed anymore, and each country will now work just for itself. But what that means is if before there wasn't any heavy industry in your country, like, for example, making vehicles, now you won't be able to get a new car, and all you can ever hope for is some crappy bicycle at best. And I'm not saying that all social media has disappeared but now you can only have private conversations with your friends somewhere deep in the woods and with the radio turned up really loud. And now, even if you want a haircut, your hairstyle will need to get an approval from the local administration. And there are just a limited number of government-approved hairdos. But what's most frightening is that all countries now suspect each other of being a potential threat. So, almost all resources of every country are invested in military buildups. And alas, one of these days, somebody's gonna break down and hit that big red button. Arnold, you saved the world! Who would have thought your colorblindness would save the planet?
Hey, who turned off the light? Hmm. Arnold, you better not touch anything. What's going on? Arnold, run! Mother of God, it looks like we're now in the 13th century. And we're here during the Holy Inquisition. Hey. What an awesome trip. The main mission of the Inquisition was fighting the heretics. Hey, what did Arnold even do? Ooh, I think I get it now. They mistook your phone for a weapon of black magic. The Inquisition didn't get along so well with progress. When Giordano Bruno proved that the Earth revolves around the sun, it completely contradicted Catholic ideas. Arnold, you're out of luck. In those days, all redheads were suspected of having ties with the devil. Relax. At first, they'll just question you. Take a seat and calm down. The chairs here are made of iron, specifically so that they can be heated. Confessions were usually obtained through torture. You need to give up heresy, Arnold. During the time of the Inquisition, a lot of heathen rituals were mistaken for black magic. They tried to convert heathens to Catholicism. Come on, Arnold, embrace Catholicism and you'll be free. It's true the Inquisition sometimes let those truly repentant go free. Holy baloney, what now? It looks like someone reported you. People often accused others of heresy in order to get rid of them. I don't know if you can endure any more of these tortures, Arnold. Meet the Spanish boot, the heretic's fork, and the Judas cradle. Arnold, I heavily advise you to confess about everything. Okay, by signing this, you agree that you're a necromancer, a magician, and a gnome. The positive thing is that the tortures are over, and the Inquisition, in fact, did not execute people. After confessing, the offender was sentenced in a state court. Calm down, Arnie. No one will burn you. According to the law, they'll just chop your head off. Wow, it looks like everyone is scared of your ability to release flames from your hands. It seems to be powerful magic. Poor Arnold's already rifled through the glove box, found last year's french fries, and is listening for the hundredth time to a Ricky Martin CD that's stuck in the stereo. I agree, it's appalling. Don't do it, Arnold. You won't save any time, and it's really dangerous. Say thank you, Arnie. I'm the one who saved your butt by stopping time, just like they do in cartoons. What would you do first in such a situation? Maybe go look in the Pentagon archives and find out if Armstrong really did go to the moon. Or maybe you dare to kiss Susie. Ooh. The main thing is not to end up in Japan. They love stopping time. I mean, they just really, really love it. In terms of physics, if time stops, then everything stops. You don't have to be a mathematician to understand that time is one of the components of speed and distance. If one of these values is zero, then all the others will be zero as well. Now, onward to adventure. Oops. Light particles and photons have also stopped. Accordingly, the ability to distinguish anything with your eyesight has disappeared. And you won't be able to drink any water. Everything is frozen. Here's another interesting fact. A stream of light which left Earth 65 million years ago is now 65 million light years away. And someone with a large enough telescope pointed right at the Earth can now see the dinosaurs. But I suggest we return to reality, Arnold. Now you won't feel like you're wasting time because every second of our lives is beautiful. <laughs> Mm. Arnold, look! It's you, but from the future! Wait, Arnold, he doesn't need your clothes, he needs your help! That's why you're going to the year 2050! Oh dear, that's not the bright future people are thinking about. Indeed, by 2050, the Earth is suffering from global warming. The planet's population has grown to over 10 billion people. This overpopulation has caused a shortage of fresh water. Can you imagine? 
The planet is on the brink of destruction, and they're fighting over Pepsi. All right, back to our mission. In 2050, everyone has cybernetic implants. And since enemy drones can detect implants at a distance of 10 kilometers, you, Arnold, are the most undetectable and invulnerable person in 2050. You are the one who will help change the course of the war. Soldiers assemble. And so, Arnold, the enemy has been spotted in the north, but the way is blocked by electromagnetic guns. Instead of projectiles, they fire electrical impulses, and the impulse speed exceeds 7,000 kilometers an hour. We have to find shelter. Quick, go down into the subway. You escape the guns, Arnold, but there are other problems now. Drones detected by scanners. And don't worry, Arnold, remember, these drones won't even notice you. You just need to rush past them and turn off the power. Well done, Arnold. The future sure wasn't ready for the likes of you. Keep going, buddy. You're almost there. It's time to get to the surface. Arnold, there are a lot of enemies around. Get into the exosuit. With it, you can become a super soldier and travel long distances without getting tired. And all physical activity becomes 20 times easier than it was before. You're unstoppable now, Arnold. Now you just need to figure out the controls. Huh? Arnold, no! You just killed yourself from the future. Okay, well, no time to grieve. Your enemies are coming. You have a flamethrower. Use it. Oh, yeah. No one ever thought that one day this would happen in Hollywood. <laughs> Arnold, look out! A rocket! Arnold, uh, something unexpected has happened. Do you remember the movie The Devil's Double? The one where a rich boy forcibly turns another person into his double and then sends the clone instead of himself to dangerous meetings and stuff like that. So, yeah, we need you to help out one of my acquaintances. You'll replace Kim Jong-un for a day. Can you even imagine ruling a country with a population of 25 million people that obey, adore, and extol you, and only you? But, to be frank, they don't have a choice in the matter. Many things that most people see as normal over here are only allowed for you over there. For example, wearing clothes from the best European designers or eating Nutella. While you're engaged in important state affairs, your huge house is guarded by a platoon of armed soldiers, an electric fence, and a minefield. Even a nuclear explosion will be repelled by its walls, which are covered with lead rods. Now get ready, because we're going on a trip. Kim said that he wouldn't survive doing this for a second time, and it all looks pretty suspicious. So you're going instead. Your personal armored train starts its journey straight from this house. Its speed doesn't exceed 60 kilometers per hour due to the enormous weight of the cars, which are sheathed with armored plates. Just for today, all of this is in your possession. The harvest this year was quite unsuccessful, as you can see, and 10 million people may die from hunger, sure, but 15 million more will still remain. Guys, you'd better not go in there for about 20 minutes. Okay, fine, if that's for the state's security. Only the president can use the mobile toilet. All urine and stool samples are collected to monitor your health and make sure that no spy, God forbid, finds out about your illnesses. The best room in the whole city was rented just for you. And after leaving, no one will even think that the president stayed here. The security service doesn't leave a single fingerprint or hair from the glorious ruler. Everyone's already waiting for you. Say nothing. Just smile and wave your hand. I just knew that the U.S. president wouldn't send a meeting invitation on WhatsApp. Don't be such an idiot. You have a billionaire president right in front of you. You can ask him for anything. And by the way, what did you ask for? It's a shame that this time Trump is the one mocking you, and not me. Because now you're going to replace him for an entire day. Why will it be a mockery? Just look at what he eats. Chips, burgers, rivers of cola. You'll kick the bucket before the end of the day. 
After eating Egg McMuffins and cola for breakfast, you're going to have a meeting with the security services. Sign some documents and, well, oh hell, screw this. Let's go have some fun around the city. You're now waiting for the presidential motorcade. These are 12 identical bulletproof cars that can withstand the explosion of a bomb. This is kind of boring. Maybe we should declare a state of emergency. Or I know, we could troll Kim Jong-un. Maybe we should endorse a law like every American citizen must be subscribed to Meet Arnold. Home sweet home. For dinner, we have chicken legs from KFC and, of course, more cola. Something tells me that Trump eats this way just for the image. But in reality... So that's why he takes an annual salary of just one dollar. You asked for his salary as a reward. You're such a maroon. So you got your dollar, but you have to pay taxes for the whole $400,000, which is Trump's original salary, although he gives that away to federal agencies. So, Arnold, which kidney are you going to sell?